मेरे बाल बच्चे होंगे मैं आपको बोल देता हूँ Honestly speaking, I don't want kids, but this is something I will do for my parents in order uh, to make them happy and to accept me as a son. That statement could well be one of the most irresponsible things ever said on this show. When Summit starts to talk about adopting a child that he doesn't really want in order to use them as a bargaining chip to win back his parents' love, that makes me angrier than one of Jenny's tantrums. No, that's it. <laughs> no wonder he's so scared to tell her. I am afraid to bring this up with Jenny because I always tell Jenny that I don't want kids but if I will have a kid that might make them happy Now it's been a few weeks since I've done a Jenny and Summit video because quite frankly the idea of covering their Karma Sutra lessons made me feel violently ill Yeah uh, like a, a diarrhea but like now it's leaking Too much information Summit too much. But now that their honeymoon is over and they're back at home, we join Summit yet again as he's trying to build bridges and salvage a relationship with his parents. Sound familiar, anyone? I want my parents to uh, understand our love and uh, accept my relationship with Jenny. And while Summit would like his wife to join him at the meeting, Jenny has learned her lesson. She knows exactly what to expect. Smith's getting ready to go and see his family and he thinks he's going to talk to them and convince them to accept me as his wife and I'm just thinking what a waste of time. It's starting to get old. Will you going to come with me with, over there? No, actually I have a lot of unpacking to do and I have to straighten out the closet and I, and I still have to mop the floor and stuff. Oh, the irony. She'd rather mop and clean than see his family again. And who can blame her? The question is, what exactly is Summit hoping to achieve with the meeting? I want them to be at least, at least the way they were before our marriage, at least when they call me once in a week. And while Jenny is very sceptical and realistic that this isn't likely to happen again, at least not while they're married, Summit takes issue with Jenny's attitude. I know Jenny thinks according to the American way, according to the American way, like your parents are mean to you and you should just let them go. But I cannot let that happen. Sorry, Summit. I completely disagree with this viewpoint. No one wakes up in the morning without cause and says, I'm never going to speak to my parents again. Usually that drastic action comes as a result of something extreme that's happened. And that's what's happened in this case, right? It's extreme. So for Summit to turn around and blame that on American culture, as if somehow Americans care less about their parents, is totally untrue and the wrong way to look at things. Instead of shifting the blame on an American, try looking a bit closer to home. I, they are my parents. I know they love me and the way uh, they love me and nobody else in this world can love me, so my efforts will, will never stop. Unfortunately for Summit, it feels like that effort is very one-sided. His parents aren't willing to build bridges and make amends until his marriage with Jenny is over. In fact, much to Summit's dismay, without telling him, his parents have decided not to show up for the meeting. I'm trying to hide it right now, uh, but I am hurt. When I saw my aunt and uh, my brother, instead of my parents, I was very shocked because I thought my parents will come and I will talk to them. In their place, his parents have sent Aunt Surat, Summit's mum's sister. And it doesn't take long for us to see that, like her sister, Aunt Surat is also an expert in the dark art of emotional blackmail. Your mum's health, wellness, mental stability, maybe even her life. You are solely responsible for all of it. You need to fix it. 
I mean, that right there is emotional manipulation, emotional blackmail at its finest. Even when Summit tries to argue that he's happy, like, let me just be happy. Don't make me choose between my mum's health and my own happiness. You all remember how that went last time. That plea seems to fall on deaf ears. You see the brother kind of look up at the aunt to see how is she going to respond to that? What do we say? But nothing is said. They just remain silent. It's sad how his family haven't learned that by forcing him to do something against his wishes, as was the case for his arranged marriage, things won't end well. I try to please my family by marrying uh, with the woman, which they chose it for me. And look how that turned out, like that was a complete disaster that cost me a lot of money and trauma and my happiness. But sadly, that's the thing. Summit's personal happiness is expected to be secondary to that of his family's. And it's this obsession of Summit's to try and make his parents happy that leads to him saying this. <laughs> If you don't really want kids, as Summit says he doesn't, then you shouldn't have kids to make someone else happy. I don't care if that's your partner or your parents. A kid is never a weapon or a bargaining chip. And to suggest that that in some way is his get out of jail card, his way to make his parents happy again, is horribly irresponsible. Honestly speaking, I don't want kids, but this is something I will do for my parents in order uh, to make them happy and uh, accept me as a son. He's conveniently ignoring the fact that his parents won't accept Jenny, period. Kid or no kid. And he's also conveniently sweeping under the carpet the fact that he and Jenny have never even spoken about adopting or having a surrogate before. This is going to come as a complete bolt out of the blue for her, especially considering she already has kids and grandkids. Jenny, you know not knowing where to go after that bombshell, Summit's aunt ends the meeting, but not before a little bit more emotional manipulation. Now, when Summit comes home, we get a sense of just how messed up his thought process is. On the one hand, he says, I'm so worried about telling Jenny the exact how bad it was, just because I don't want her to start growing more negative feeling about my family. <laughs> yeah, right. That ship sailed a long time ago, Summit. But OK, I understand the sentiment. So in that fashion, it's probably not the best idea to then say this. Your parents didn't show up. And I don't know why they're thinking that you are a reason for destroying a family. I mean, what was that, Summit? Either you're trying to protect her or you're not. All of this just makes me think that Summit has verbal diarrhea. He just splurts out whatever he thinks. No real thought process, no real logic. It crosses his mind, so he says it. And it backfires on him when Jenny, who has had enough of being blamed for everything, decides she's not willing to take this anymore. Okay, then it's time to go to America, then that's what I say. There's nothing else left to do. I don't want to take you from them, but that's, it's going to happen because what they're doing to me is not fair. That's not right. I put up with Summit's parents for years. You know, I think it's time for Summit to make a sacrifice for me now and move to America and see how life is away from his parents. Summit, however, doesn't think that that's such a good idea. And somehow, the idea to go to America gets flipped around and made to look like Jenny is the villain. For her, it's a case of damned if you do and damned if you don't. Whatever she does, she's just never going to get any kind of acceptance from Summit's family. Now they will think, okay, now Jenny 
Sukhmasan all the way and we can't even near him anymore. Like Kind of their fault, isn't it? You don't want to leave India and go to my country? No, actually not. No? Uh, well, then what, do you want, then what do you want me to do? Leave and no, go to no, America no, no, no. by myself? Well, Jenny, <laughs> when you hear about Summit's plans to have kids, something tells me you might be desperate to catch the first plane out of there without him. I am afraid to bring this up with Jenny because I always tell Jenny that I don't want kids, so I don't know how she's going to feel about it, but it might change our relationship for good. <laughs>